my favorite winter albums um, now is uh, today is the first day this year um, it snowed in Vienna I'm, I'm in Vienna in Austria so the first day it snowed and so I thought it's the exactly right moment to do this episode you know we are making ranking videos on this channel for each each season and now it's winter uh, my favorite winter albums um, as usual I have some u uh, usual <laughs> some honorable mentions and the first one is our recurring guest in those videos Ben and Sebastian this is the first time I think that they don't make the top 10 you know it's a very seasonal band I think they were in my top 10 summer albums with the boy with the Arab strap and in my favorite autumn albums with for, with my favorite of the albums uh, fold your hands child you walk like a peasant and now they make the honorable list with the honorable mentions with with this wintery album if you're feeling sinister and also their debut uh, this is the second album also their debut album tiger milk would also have been a contender for for winter albums but this makes at least the honorable mentions because it has the song the fox in the snow on it and this is probably one of the most winter wintery songs I've ever heard in my life and it's a it's a great I don't have to say it because all albums I consider all those albums great albums but I say it once this is a great album the next album is a Scandinavian album you know I guess we have several Scandinavian artists today surprisingly and this is Jens Legmann from Sweden with Oh, you are so silent, Jens. And this is, again, this is, you know, this is, it's, first of all, it's an album that doesn't take itself too serious. So it's not like the somber, um, let's, let's have, let's have, so, let's have Christmas. It's, it's not, it's not like a cliche um, winter album that's the serious. It's, it's more funny, but... But again, it's it's very wintry, you know. It has some, you know, it has those 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 bell sounds all the time. Not all the time, but but often. So bell sounds and very icy atmosphere at times. Um, I, I have to look up the the songs, but you know, funny enough, I, I'm I'm reading through the tracklist and I'm, uh, there's a song, a sweet summer's night on Hammerhill. So that's probably not the most wintry songs. But songs like Effort, The Wrong Hands, Maple Leaves, they are all very wintry to me. And now that we're not, not, not just yet at the top 10, but I don't have them with me now at the moment, but uh, other mentions, honorable mentions I would make is uh, Amina, which are the, I think they were the string section for Sigur Ross, again, a Scandinavian, very wintry sounding band. But you know, Sigur Ross would have been too obvious probably. They're from Iceland, and I mean, are also from Iceland, and uh, they were the string section for Sigur Ross often, and they also put out their own albums. And if you if you like winter and you don't know Amina, you should check out Amina. It's a great band, but I, I don't know which of their albums I would recommend because they're all basically very wintry to me. So my number ten again Scandinavia. Is uh, and now it's three different countries from Scandinavia. I think she's from Denmark, Agnes Obel. And as you can see, this is still wrapped up, this is still not unpacked because this will be a Christmas present to my girlfriend. Fortunately, my girlfriend doesn't really watch my YouTube channel, so she, you know, <laughs> she, she will not know that I will buy this for her, that I have bought this for her until, until it's Christmas. Um, she's a fan of Agnes Obel, but she doesn't have any albums. I, I bought two albums for her for Christmas. This is just one of the two, um, and I will, I will give her two albums. But she she knows she knows her from from her father. Her, the father of my girlfriend. Very complicated story. Is is a fan of her. It seems, and because always when we're going in his car, he, even summer and whenever, he puts on. A record by her and this is very wintery mu music as far as I can recall from those 
experiences in, in the car of the father of my girlfriend. Uh, number nine, again, this is probably, maybe this episode my girlfriend should watch because though, so far these are all artists my girlfriend really loves. You know, she's a, a winter is probably her favorite season, I guess. Um, I guess this is one of her favorite, all time favorite albums. OK Computer by Radiohead. Um, again, there's a Christmas story <laughs> with this album um, because this is last year's Christmas present to my girlfriend. Um, but this was a bit embarrassing because when, when, when she opened up the, the present and she, she, she saw it's this, she said, Hey, Stefan. <laughs> This you gave this to me to me the year before. <laughs> I, I have forgotten it. I I, I I gave it to her twice. So um so now this is my copy. Um so she gave me uh, my present back. She already had it from me from the year before. I hope this doesn't happen with this album again. Maybe I've forgotten it. I've, uh, no, I don't think that I bought her this album last year. Um number number eight. Now finally we we it's this is not. Now we can stop talking about my girlfriend because I, 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 I know she doesn't like this artist. From now on it's, it's artist that I like. Um, this is Tricky, uh, Pre-Millennium Tension. This is my favorite Tricky album. Maxinque is the more iconic album by him, which isn't a very wintry album. But this album, I, I, I think 1998, I guess it's 1998. This is, I bought it like the week it came out. Uh, because I read something about it, or I, I even heard something uh, from it on, on, on our local alternative music radio at the time. I was like, how old was I? I was, I'm not good <laughs> at, in maths. Uh, I guess I was 15 or something like that. And I, and I bought this album and, you know, this was very haunting. This is like the soundtrack to a horror movie. It's, you know, you could tell that at that time he, he smoked too much weed. It's a very paranoid album. And and dub, dub, there's dub. You know, it's funny, it's almost a reggae album that makes my winter list. It's, it's very dub, it has many dub influences. But it's an electronic album at the time that kind of music was called trip hop. And it's very, it's very, it's very depressing in a way. And it's very wintery. And I really love that album, you know. It's just, I still like it. I can't listen to it too often. With most winter albums, those are albums you, you know, I, I like music that, that cheers me up more than I like music that brings me down. But once in a while, you're in, in a mood for something like that, and then it's, this is a great piece of art almost, I would say. Great album, but tricky. Uh, number seven is by one of the greatest, if not the greatest songwriter of all time, Bob Dylan. His most recent album, uh, Rough and Rowdy Ways, I guess one or two years ago, maybe two years ago. Uh, well, this is probably, in my opinion, his best album since O Mercy from 1989. And it's a very wintry sounding album. I could have also picked um, Another Side of Bob Dylan from 1964. It's also a very, very winter evoking album. Great album. Uh, and it, it has a bit, Rough and Rowdy Ways has a bit of a Nick Cave atmosphere to it. And Nick Cave is also, he's from, like with, with tricky and, and reggae music, sometimes it doesn't make sense. Nick Cave is from Australia, but he's a very wintry artist. And maybe that's because sometimes you long for the things that you don't have. Like it's, it's probably one of those, those things. Um, number six is one of the best albums of the 1980s, you know, it's it's not in a good condition, but that all that, that shows you that I really like or love this album, that I li listen to it maybe a thousand times in my life, because I've used it so often. Um, the Cure, Disintegration, maybe, not maybe, this is my favorite Cure album, it's a masterpiece, um, how many songs, 12 songs, every song. It's a masterpiece. <laughs> it's an incredible album and very winter re. Uh, number five. This is now so far from all the uh, yeah. This is from all the albums in the list. You know, I can spoil it now. From all the you know there are albums that I consider more wintery, but from all the albums in that list, this is my favorite album. 
This is my in my top 10 albums of all time, I would say. Closing Time by Tom Waits, his debut album. I'm not the biggest Tom Waits fan. You know, I'm a bit of a Tom Waits fan. I like him. I think he's, you know, I think he's a genius. But I'm not, I'm not one of those people who have each album in his catalog and who thinks that everything he ever did is is, is great. Uh, you know, there are phases in his career and albums that I really don't don't really like. <laughs> but the early phase is one of my favorite. Is my favorite phase of his career. And his first album is my favorite album. This is, you know, it's a, it's a sad album. It's, it's it's a very it's it's really a sad album. You, again, you have to be in the right mood. And again, I don't listen to albums like that, you know, on a regular basis. But when you're in the mood, you know, it's also a very romantic album. So if you if you're with someone that that you love and and you sit near the the fireplace and you drink a glass of red wine. Then it's probably a wonderful album. And number four is like a tie between two albums. It's hard for me to to pick one. One is here in the background, "Sounds of Love and Hate" by Leonard Cohen. And but you know, if I had to choose, this would be the pick for the list. Various positions by Leonard Cohen. You know, Songs of Love and Hate starts with Avalanche and that, that song is probably on the complete list the most winter song <laughs> in itself. But but the album Various Positions is my favorite Leonard Cohen album. Maybe a bit underrated in his catalogue because it's usually the three or four albums that people think that critics think are more important. But, and this is from the 80s, you know, not well regarded time in his career, but I think, in my opinion, Various Positions is my favorite album. And, yeah, very, it's a, it's a perfect album to put on in, you know, like December, January, February. If you're, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, of course. <laughs> if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, it would be the other way around. Um, number three is, have I to talked about him already? Um, you know, I'm not sure, but you know the the Bob Dylan album we've just had. I I, I think that Rough and Rowdy Ways always reminds me on on on, on Nick Cave. You know that when Bob Dylan, you know Nick Cave always wanted to sound like Bob Dylan, <laughs> but on Rough and Rowdy Ways I think Bob Dylan wanted to sound like Nick Cave. But this is Nick Cave himself. Uh, my favorite album by him, No More Shall We Part. I think it's from something like 2000 or 2001, 2000. Okay, it doesn't tell me. I guess it's from 2001, if I remember correctly. Wow, this is this is a masterpiece. This is one of the, at least in my opinion, 10 best albums of the 21st century so far. And, you know, great album. Number two, you know, I'm not going to talk a lot about it because I've just recorded and released my... Uh, was it the top five? My top five favorite Björk albums list came out like three weeks ago. And this was my number one on that list, my favorite Björk album. And it's here number two, Homogenic by Björk. So if you want if you want me to talk about this more, you have to watch my Björk video. But I will say so I will say it's this is one of the best albums of the nineteen nineties. This is what I'm going to say. Next album is one of the best albums of the, what was it called, the noughties? <laughs> the, 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 the decade before, before the 20s. And maybe this is the best album of the 21st century so far. I'm not, you know, sometimes I, I, I think it's overrated, but every now and then, especially in winter, when I'm listening to it, I think, no, this is a masterpiece. Uh, it's, and this is, today it's my number one album in my, Top 10 favorite winter albums list. It's Funeral, the debut album by Arcade Fire. And I th yeah, the, the reason why it is number one is because of my my first experience with that album. Because uh, when it came, I'm, I'm, I'm not good with, with, you know, in the 60s and 70s, I'm good with it, but uh, but with recent, with recent, <laughs> 20 years ago. With, with more modern albums, I'm not good with, with in which year it came out, but I guess something like 2004, 2005. And, and when it came out, you know, 
a hipster friend of mine at that time who always knew about the coolest bands first. Um, he gave this, he burned this to me, you know, on a, on a CD, you know, that was that time before streaming and things like that. And he burned the CD for me, and it was winter, it was like November, November, December. And he gave it to me in the year it came out, it must have been 2005 or 2006. And I said, listen to this, this is, this is the new best band in the world. And I, I, I haven't heard anything about them before. I haven't heard the name Arcade Fire before. And, you know, I thought, ah, it's again one of those hyped bands that he always recommends to me. I will listen to it one day. And, and you know, it, it lay around one or two weeks. And then, you know, this, those were the times of the Discman. <laughs> Of, of the little CD player with the headphones, like the Walkman and you, the portable uh, CD player. And I, one day, it, it was the first day it snowed, like today is the first day it snowed this year, but it was the first day it snowed in whenever it was, 2005 or 2006. And I put it in my Discman and I said, okay, now I will listen to it. And I walked through the winter wonderland that Vienna was on that day. And it was immediately like wow, <laughs> the, mu the music is the, the music is perfect for for my experience on the, uh, during that walk. Yeah, it's when the first song "Neighborhood," which is still my favorite Arcade Fire song, when the first ten seconds I knew wow, <laughs> this is the the right record at the record at the right time, and I fell in love with the, with the whole record. And during that winter, this was you know. I probably listened to that album during that winter more than 100 times and after that winter I listened to that album less than 100 times but still I listened, I listen here and there I listen to it still but that winter, that was like the ultimate winter album to me and you know, it's for that reason alone it's my number one favorite winter album because of my own experience and that was my least favorite my favorite albums. Thank you very much for watching.